Howdy, April Pregal. It's Miss Cash. Today I'm going to teach uh, Mr. Passwater's notes on um, topic 311. So the secant, cosecant, and cotangent functions. Um, so I introduced to this already this year and um, do it slightly differently. Um, but I thought I would teach through this and maybe I'll try and remember to put in the comments a link to how I like to teach this. Um, so to begin with, we talk, we can talk about the reciprocal and the quotient functions. Um, so the reciprocal identities are um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So secant is defined to be one over cosine of x. Um, and then, well, where cosine of x is not equal to zero. So what happens is we end up getting asymptotes anywhere that cosine would be equal to zero. So when we look at secant, um, what we have down here in this graph is this is the graph of cosine through here. And then anywhere that cosine had a zero, can you see? Let me see if I can zoom in for you a little bit. Anywhere cosine had a zero, we now have a vertical asymptote. Um, and then since it's the reciprocal of cosine, when cosine gets, well, here's what I like to write. I like to write one over something very, very small gives us something very, very big. Okay, and so as we get, as cosine is getting closer and closer and closer to zero, the it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The, the reciprocal of something really, really small gets really, really big. And that's why secant will shoot off to infinity as cosine gets closer to zero. And then the same thing happens over here. We're getting closer and closer to zero, but in the negative direction. So something really, really small and negative ends up being something really, really big and negative. Um, and so this will shoot down to positive infinity here. And then keep in mind these points, um, cosine has a maximum value when y is equal to one. And so the reciprocal one over one would still be one. And so it has those points in common. Um, and so the graph of secant has a vertical asymptotes where cosine equals zero, which we talked about. And we like to use this x is equal to pi over two plus pi k, where k is an integer. In my class, we use a little more symbolic notation. We'll say k is an element of z for that. That's the symbol for integer. Um, and we nicknamed that Kez. Um, I didn't come up with it, but my kids said that, and we've been using it ever since. So that's secant, um, which is one over cosine. Cosecant is defined to be one over sine. Um, and so the, it behaves in an almost identical way to secant, um, except now, so notice you'll note we, on this one we were graphing cosine and then taking the reciprocal, now we're graphing sine. And so it's the, basic, the same basic shape, but they're shifted over. Um, this is also one where my kids nicknamed it Lego hands because I would, I would be holding up, I would show them my hands, hang on, let's see if I can, um, and I would be like, oh look, okay, so we're doing this sort of thing, um, and it looks like little Lego figures. Um, and we also talk about, um, I also use the, the reference uh, mind the gap because um, secant and cosecant, we're gonna, they're gonna talk about this in just a second, but the range goes from negative infinity to negative one, and then we have a gap, so we have to mind the gap. I'm pretty sure that's what the tube says in London, um, and actually, I am going to England over spring break, so I will get to find out for sure. Um, but I'd heard that, and so I've joked about the secant and cosecant functions. You have to mind the gap for many, many years. I've joked about that. And then it picks up again from one, and it goes to infinity. So it's um, a hard bracket on negative one and positive one because it does include those points. But then we have to mind the gap. Um, okay, so it's Lego hands and mind the gap. Um, so cosecant, we said, was one over sine. Um, so cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. What I like to remember, um, well, and then cotangent, is the reciprocal of tangent. So one over tangent of x will be equal to cotangent of x. Um, they did not graph this one for us yet, but that's okay. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, this, so these one, two, three are all reciprocal identities. Um, you can also say that um, cosine of x is equal to one over secant of x. Sorry. Um, that's not as helpful, but it's true. Um, and then sine of x would also be equal to 1 over cosecant of x. And tangent of x would also be equal to 1 over cotangent of x. Can you read my handwriting on top of that line? Um, so there's, you could, decide, you could say that there are six, one, two, three, four, five, six reciprocal identities. This one right here is actually one of the quotient identities. 
Because they're saying cotangent, now where does this come from? Well, tangent, the other quotient identity is that tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. Well, if cotangent is the reciprocal, then we can just flip sine of, we can take the reciprocal of, the reciprocal of both of these give me cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. Um, so these, these two are the two quotient identities, and you can kind of consider there to be six reciprocal identities, or five that matter. Um, and what I always tell my kids is that each pair, um, so cosine's buddy is secant, and sine's buddy is cosecant, and tangent's buddy is cotangent, each pair has one co. So if you try and put, we have cosine with secant, we have sine with cosecant, we have tangent with cotangent. Um, so if you try and put two co's together, you did the wrong thing. So hopefully that helps you remember. Um, and then we didn't talk about the asymptotes here now up here um, when sine has zeros, which was pi k, where k is an element of the integers. Okay? And then the graph of cotangent. Okay, so the way, maybe I'll make a link to um, how I introduced this one. But basically, cotangent is going to have asymptotes anywhere sine is zero, which is the same here as pi k. So um, sine was zero at pi k. Um, right, because we just said cotangent is equal to cosine over sine. So it has zeros anywhere the numerator is zero. So when cosine of x is equal to zero, that's when x is equal to pi over 2 plus pi k, that's when my graph is going to have zeros. So here at, at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, at negative pi over 2, at 5 pi over 2, there's infinitely many. And then it's going to have asymptotes when sine of x is equal to zero, which happens when x is equal to pi k. And then the way that I like to remember what happens is that I like to think unit circle. So in quadrant one, we're going from zero to pi over two, both tangent and cotangent will be positive in that quadrant. Okay, so from zero to pi over two, we're only going to have positive values here. Well then, when we go from into quadrant two, we're going from pi over two to pi, these tangent values are negative. The reciprocal of a negative is still a negative. So cotangent here is going to be negative. And then we're positive, and then we're negative over here. So it, this was 3 pi over 2, and then we get back to 2 pi. So from pi over 2 here to pi, we have negative values. And so that's why we're going down like that. And then from pi, this asymptote, to 3 pi over 2, here's 3. This is not labeled, but it's that's what it is, 3 pi over 2. These are positive values. So that helps me remember if I forget how exactly to draw my, my shape. Okay, um, I have not looked at these questions, so if you catch my mistake before I do, comment below. Um, but here we go. Let f of x equals 3 secant 2x, which of the following is a vertical asymptote on the graph? Okay, so this 2, the 3 is where we, it affects the gap. Okay, so that mind the gap is going to be pulled by this 3. So that will affect, the 3 will affect the range, but it will not affect the domain. Um, and so the 2 does move things vertically. Is that what I wanted to say? Well, it pulls things horizontally. No, it, okay, it's horizontally, my bad. Um, so it's going to take everybody and compress it by a factor of 2, is how I would say that. Um, and so secant used to have asymptotes at pi over 2 plus pi k but now they've come in by a factor of two. Um, so here's the easier way to solve this whole problem. Um, we have two, if I take two x and I set it equal to where the parent function had asymptotes, then when I solve, I can divide by two, multiply by one half, pi over four plus pi over two k. So this is not gonna be included in that. This is not, this is, this is not, okay? Um, so the next one, which of the following is a vertical asymptote? So on this one, this is going to shift our graph up and down. This is going to, so the negative, so we would typically see it written this way, negative 2 cosecant pi x plus 4. It's going to shift the whole graph up. That affects the range, but not the domain. That affects the range, but not the domain. This negative means that instead of, instead of being like this, we now have flipped. I can't do that at that angle. I do it in the classroom better, whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and say pi x is equal to, where does cosecant usually have asymptotes? At pi k. So now I can divide both sides by pi, and I get that x is equal to k. So this would be any integer, so 1, 2, 3, etc. So not an integer, not an integer, not an integer. Here we go. 
Okay, so now we're looking at the range. This two right here has no impact on the range, but the three does. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna, we have to mind the gap, it's gonna pull our gap apart. And so we're gonna go from negative infinity to negative three, and then three to infinity. There we go. This would have been, this is, this is sort of the gap, sort of not, but this is what would have happened had, had our equation been h of theta is equal to three sine theta, or sine of whatever, I don't really care. That's what the range would be. Okay, um, next one here. What is the vertical asymptote? So cotangent, so we can take this 2 pi x and set it equal to where cotangent typically has asymptotes. Cotangent typically has asymptotes at pi k. And so we can multiply by 1 over 2 pi. The pi's will cancel, and I get x is equal to 1 half k. So it's one half, it's one, it's three halves, it's two, and so forth. Okay, so this is not good, this is not good, this is not good. Here we go. That was fun. Um, oh, uh, we're about 11 minutes into our video. So how about you come back and we will, I'll finish this last little bit and I'll find a calculator before I do. Um, so come back for the next video and I'll see you there. Subscribe, keep watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a good time, go practice.